Hey Edmonton, this is Austin here with YEG Nation. Today we met up with Sandy Pond over here in Ward 9. Uh, Sandy, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, uh, Tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and, and why you got into politics. Well, I have lived in this area for over 26 years. We raised my family here. Uh, both of my children have grown and the professionals. Uh, over the years, with my profession as a real estate agent, I hear people I understand what they need and I hear what they want. But the thing is, as a resident, we're not getting any of that in Ward 9. This is the area I represent. So the thing is that my children are grown. I put a lot of time and init into community initiatives. Now I'm just transitioning with all my skills into City Council Absolutely. and getting things done. So with your with you uh, running for city council, what what was the biggest thing? What was the one thing that really got you involved, or wanted to get you involved with city council? Why? What was the one kind of turning point that made you really want to get involved with city council? Oh well, one thing is that you know the uh, council that we've had for 19 years, uh, Councilor Anderson is retiring, um, and understanding the growth and the dynamics of this particular board, uh, we really need a lot of uh, we need people with experience, maturity, and understanding how to make decisions and dealing with big dollars uh, through my own experience in business and developments and, and also with community initiative and as a leader in the community in various uh, uh, organizations. Uh, I know that I can bring that to the table. Um, the other thing is that it's not just one thing, it's multiple things that are really uh, getting people up, get up raw. In, in the areas that, you know, the transportation is the number one because to a little drive that's been congested for so long, especially rush hours, it's, it, it's not getting easier to travel around here. And it's been the last 30 years and it has never expanded. Uh, Chappelle, which is one of the Heritage Valley, east and west, uh, that area has tremendous growth. A lot of children, a lot of young families, a lot of young professionals like you moving in the area. But there's only one road going in, one lane going each side. That's ridiculous. They closed three, four times, they pave it, repave it, but then they didn't resolve the problem, which is how you decrease volume, right? When you're bottleneck, you're increasing volume. So how do we do that? The other thing is that we talk about schools, parks, taking park sites away uh, to build density. I have a lot of density. There is enough market housing around the area. Uh, I understand there is affordable housing issues. I deal with that with other initiatives in downtown. Uh, but I think that things are better planned. And most important is that if it's planned right, then taxpayers will save money. So my platform is Smarter City, which is dealing with planning, dealing with decision making, community consultation, and then lower taxes. Not that we're lowering the taxes or, or, or eliminating taxes totally. That doesn't make sense because you need money to build infrastructure for the future. Right. The thing is that how can we budget properly? So there is no overrun, there's no delays on project. And this way I can make sure that money are well spent and then we can allow to have other, that, the extra money that we can spend on better better initiatives that we can solve problems, real problems in the city. So that's what makes me, you know, invigorated to do something and to run for city council for Ward 9. Right, and those are very exciting things to talk about and I'm, I'm sure a lot of the residents of Ward 9 are happy to hear that a lot of people in Ward 9 and as councillors and as candidates and, uh, or sorry, as candidates and as well as mm -hmm. constituents um, are really excited to see, you know, some fresh ideas coming in. I don't particularly live in Ward 9 but I've seen a lot of really cool things. I spend a lot of time in Ward 9. Um, so the one other thing that I like, I wanted to hear from you as being, uh, as being, well, uh, you know, a female, a female candidate. And the only women candidate in the area. Uh, female can a female candidate as well as, uh, you know, you've got a really interesting perspective from being uh, in the realty business for so long in this area. Um, how do you, what do you, what do you like about Ward 9 or how do you feel Ward 9 differs from other places in the city, you know, especially with it being so diverse, you know, with the north side and Riverbend all the way down to the new areas here in, you know, Chappelle to Williger? Oh, because it, because the area is continuing to expand and there's so much potential. And with potential, with growth, there are going to be complications, right? So I want to make sure for the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years that things are laid out properly, that people are not being, uh, in a way, they felt ripped off. Uh, some of the residents tell me that that's the term, is that they go into an area and they don't get the amenities. 
They don't get the community halls. They don't get the library. They don't get the schools built. They don't get the uh, community hub where people can walk, they bike, you know, and to go into have uh, uh, be involved with their neighbors and and meet their friends. That's what helps make a vibrant, healthy community. So I want to bring that kind of planning and making sure that these barren fields are going to be built with something smart and things are efficient and it's going to be the developments of the 21st century. That's cool stuff. Uh, with uh, One of the things we love to talk about with YG Nation is the Young Edmonton community. Um, what are you seeing? Uh, there are some common concerns in the Young Edmonton community in Ward 9. Um, but as well, you know, just some things that you want to be building for infrastructure for the younger Edmonton communities. Uh, not necessarily specifically for those younger communities, but you know, things that are going to be of, of, of interest to the people. Um, in the well, the, because I do have two millennials at home. <laughs> I get a lot of feedback from them, you know. So the thing is that what they are experiencing, I also hear every day. Um, things that, you know, developments and housing and infrastructure, roadways and amenities that can grow with them, right? Uh, because eventually you have a family, like from a young professional, uh, you've got lim limited budget coming out of university or finishing school, uh, and then later on you're going to be finding somebody and get married and hopefully have a partnership or some sort, and, uh, and then you have a family. So what can, I, what can we do here in Ward 9 can assist you to grow with you, right? And so there's, because every time if there's an interruption, it costs money. For example, you, right. you got to move to a different area just because of your job or because of travel distance or could be, you know, traffic congestion. Um, what, what can we do to increase the better quality of living and improve your lifestyle? And so this way, you can save money. You don't have to work as hard, but you can travel. You can, you know, to, to invest in your interests or maybe build a business like some of these uh, small retailers and business owners here. So how can we bring something on the table, to the table for everyone? And for young people, after all, you look at it, the demographic for Edmonton, the average age is 35. Yep. <laughs> so you know what, so we have to plan things, what's, what's, what, they do, what people anticipate. So lifestyle is very different, very active, very healthy. So from bike trails to uh, rec centers and like we talked about skating, skating, skating ring to, skate, to skateboard, you know. Uh, uh, skate parks, yeah. Skate, skate parks and uh, tennis courts, that's, you know, and cricket yeah, for places for, for pickleball, that's for the, the older right. generation, yeah. you know? <laughs> but the thing is that there, we gotta have these kind of amenities, but you gotta place it where it's close to home. You can walk to it, you can bike to it, and, uh, and without having, a, creating that congestion. Nobody wants to live in a concrete jungle all the time. So, right. so providing mixed housing, even out the density properly, so everybody's got space to grow. Right. Well, I think that my favorite thing about this kind of area of the city is that because we're expanding so rapidly, you know, there's a lot of these empty, like you said, there's an empty field literally right beside us that's got a construction fence around it. It's really interesting to see what could come out of a place like that in a ward like this, in an area like this, because it's so fresh and so unique. And we do have an uh, aging population. Yeah. And a lot of them have, like myself, have, I'm not that old yet, but the thing is that I do, I am in a sandwich set generation. So with my parents, or my, yeah, my dad, if he wants to go into a condo, now, do I have something close to my home that I can easily get, you know, to go visit him and that they don't feel that isolation? So a lot of times I, when I'm going to knock on doors that the seniors want to stay in the area, they are downsizing, but they don't want to leave their friends and right. move into some other location where they're totally unfamiliar with. And again, going back to that healthy city, you know, the, and uh, creating that healthy lifestyle and happiness. That's very important. <laughs> <laughs> happiness is key, money, no matter what. Money can't buy everything. Money can't buy everything, you're absolutely right. Uh, one other thing I'd really like uh, for you to speak directly on with, for being you know, the only female candidate in Ward 9, um, how, do you feel that, how do you feel that that affects you? you know, whether that's positive or negative, or whether, or whether you know, that feels it gives you an advantage. How do you, how do you feel that being a woman ca uh, candidate in Ward 9 uh, affects you? Wow. That is the $64,000 question, <laughs> double-edged sword. Being the only female, it makes you stand out, but I do believe competency, ability, and how you think, and is your heart in the right place for the people. That's right. most important. Uh, but, you know, again, female, 
uh, politicians are, are, are not that many. If you look at the cross spectrum of, of, of uh, party politics to municipal politics, um, women tend to, and I had that conversation in an uh, interview uh, with a couple of young ladies, um, that how do they get engaged or come into politics? A lot of them will, will tell me, they said, you know what, I'm in the childbearing age. I have to think about, you know, if I'm going to have children, uh, how is that going to affect my, my partnership? Uh, with my husband or the significant other um, and the other thing is a career path because you are taking time out to do something that is passionate right that that you want to do for the community but not necessary getting the financial reward and the advancement in a career so right. it's very very different um, and I have many friends who are past politicians and present politicians uh, female ones and they will tell me it's not an easy job it's because you do face extra criticism. Absolutely. What are you wearing today? <laughs> and uh, you know, how come? How come she look a little bloated or a little chunkier? Or how come? Well, she sh she should be wearing pants and not a, a dress. You know, these kind of silly, silly questions and comments that men usually don't face. I mean, through my campaign, I did get a few uh, nasty comments uh, and. They might pick me on me because of my size or nationality, uh, or they think that because they don't know me, because they don't know me, they think that I, you know, I, I say something about an incident or something happened, and they think that I'm 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 thin-skinned, uh, and they don't think that I can take it. You know, you know that you, you stay in the kitchen. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> the thing is that guess what? Guess where the heat is? Kitchen. So the thing is that I, I I'm looking at. Uh, I bring a different perspective, maybe because I'm a little bit more older, uh, and we have seen we've seen stuff that uh, able to calm ourselves down when situation arise, and able to bring in common sense. That's cool. That's a really interesting perspective, and I'm I'm glad that you're I'm glad that you're able to speak directly to that. Oh, thank you. You know, we don't we haven't we haven't had a lot of women counselors and, and candidates that we've we've spoken to, and and it's all it's always really interesting to see how that can affect. You know, it affects every, a lot of people in their day to day lives, but people don't understand how that can affect somebody, and that's going to you know, be you know it's a comp accompanying a seat with that much pre with that much. Power. It's a lot of pressure in yeah. politics because now you're in a fishbowl. It doesn't matter if you're man or woman. Right. You're going to get criticism from everybody. And some days you kind of feel really beat down. And most important is that get grounded, stay with, you know, have your friends around you. You know, be loved. That's right. most important because um, people don't know you. They only see a little 15 seconds on maybe five seconds or here and there. And uh, they see you that, oh, you're going cutting ribbons or, or unveiling something. But it's more work than, than people think. It is, it's, um, it's more than nine to five. And there's no glamour. Because I, I really investigated and explored all the options and uh, looked in this thing with my eyes wide open before I threw my hat in to run for city councilor for this board. Right. Because it's, it's, it's an 18 hour job. If you're really dedicated, it's seven days a week. No different than what I'm doing in real estate. <laughs> but the thing is that, you know, I'm getting, I, well, we are getting less pay. But however, uh, I don't think it's, I, I, I don't think it's a thankless job because at the end of the day you're doing something for the community and we do see the growth we see the uh, we see that residents are happy that's most important right right and uh, and then seeing that you know we put Edmonton on the map right. That's one of the, That's my goal. the very last thing that I wanted to ask yes. you is, is again as a realtor you've obviously helped on so many families with get, getting into a home and, and you've obviously stayed here for quite some time so that means a lot to, to why to why you know Edmonton's a great city. What is what is Edmonton for you? What is Edmonton for, for you, Sam? Edmonton is home. No matter where I travel uh, and no matter where I go, uh, I think of Edmonton. Uh, I can't I can't even think of spending Christmas, you know, elsewhere. Nice and warm, <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I it just Edmonton is different than any other city. A lot of people feel that um, we are a bit more laid back, and that you, can your, you can have your own space. There's tranquility, uh, but there's also uh, there's a lot of dynamic growth that can come with it, right? right. So it depends on what part of the city you travel. So Edmonton has a little bit of you know different things for, to, to offer to people so you can have a per day you can have different experience by going to north south east west 
Um, so it depends on your interest. Uh, but to Edmonton, to me, is home. And let's make this place safe, great, and wonderful. I like that. I think I can get behind that. Thank you so much for joining us, Sandy. It's lovely, you, lovely to meet you. Uh, guys, do not forget to go out and vote Monday, October 16th. We're coming up on the Ward Forum, actually, uh, for Ward 9. It is October 4th, if oh, I'm not mistaken. There is one more, September 28th. And then I have two more that I put on, well, not me put on, that um, schools have approached me. And I said, why not we put some matinee forum for the kids? That's pretty it's cool. It's the first of its kind. That's pretty awesome. But we started. I started. Actually. We are going to get all this information from Sandy. We're going to put it all together here on our post that we're going to be putting on YGNation.com. Do not forget to check that out. Uh, and again, thank you so much for joining thank us you. here here in the lovely Award Nine. It's YG Nation.